nice to meet you. How's everything been coming along? It's been good. It's nice to meet you too. I've watched all the videos and I'm like, oh, I feel like I know you a little bit. <laughs> um, everything's good. I think I'm just jumping in at this point and kind of looking to get a plan together for the next couple of months. Um, but I've gone through all the orientation videos and did a lot of the intro for logic and games. And I'll get to reading comp probably tonight or tomorrow um, just to get, get started on that front. Yeah. Perfect. That's great to hear. I'm glad you're getting into it. When are you planning on taking the LSAT? My plan is to take it in October, although I will say that I'm not above waiting until November. I did that last year, and I have not signed up yet because I kind of wanted to see where I would be in the next month and a half in terms of how confident I felt before I have to sign up on the 25th. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Any particular challenges you're facing right now as you get into it? Well, so like a little bit of background, I've taken too many tests. I think I burned out and I took, I've taken everything from probably six, 60 onward. And so I, at this point, one thing I'm struggling with is trying to map out how many tests am I going to take? And then looking at particularly LR is my worst section. So that's kind of on a section level where I'm worried, but I'm also concerned about burnout as well. I hear you. Yeah. What else, what else do you have going on? Right now I'm currently a freelancer. So, but I am applying for jobs, but at this moment in time, I have a lot more free time um, than I certainly did when I studied for this a year ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where the burnout can come in, right? When you have yeah. nothing but time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear you on that. Yeah. So are you setting, what, what does your typical day look like in terms of studying versus yeah. other stuff you're doing? So like on a day like today, where I had a lot, a lot of more free time, I woke up, did two hours of studying, then did lunch, and then did a couple more. On other days when I have work coming up, I'll usually just block it out, most likely mid-afternoon and a little bit in the evenings. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. So that's a pretty good structure right there. If you don't go beyond that, you should be fine. And two hours, break for lunch, two more. That's, that's good. And then on days you have other stuff, you're doing less LSAT. So you're also not as likely to run to the risk of burnout as long as you're making sure to save time for other life maintenance type things like sleep, diet, right. exercise, <laughs> relaxation, all that good stuff. How much is too much? I mean, I think I hit the limit of too much to be honest with you, but like, what is your recommendation about when it's just time to cut, cut it off for the day? Well, I can give a numerical answer, which would be probably five, six hours is the max I'd recommend in a single day. And that's also with breaks scattered throughout. Too much could also just be more a psychological thing as well, where you're seeing the letters on the page run together, or you're feeling stuck and you're not making headway and getting frustrated as a result of that. Assuming that it's not the first question you looked at that day, if you are feel like you're hitting a sort of limit where it's not clicking or you're getting easy things wrong when you feel like normally you get them right. You could just close the book, come back to it after a break or come back to it the next day. And it's also good to take a day off here and there too. Would like five days a week be good in terms of studying and then take a break for like in between maybe two days or six days? Would that be a good approach at this point in the game, I guess? Yeah, that Sorry, seems like again, a you know, yeah. that seems like a perfectly fine approach. Yeah, I mean, to some extent, it's going to be personal. There's not really a whole lot of one size fits all yeah. answers on this. Some people feel stressed if they don't study, then they yeah. want to do a little something every day. So yeah. even if on your day off, if you wanted to do a question here or there, that could be all right if you feel like you need to. Yeah, but that's more just for you than for the actual content of what you're working on itself. And I think it's fine to take days off, definitely. And I think if you're asking these questions, it's probably beneficial for you to take a day off here and there completely. Yeah, I'm that person that like, I have to do something. And I did that. And it just, I don't think, I think one of the things since watching the early videos here that I've learned from you is that I know looking back, I studied for six months and then took it twice. And then I've taken all this time off to come back to take it this fall. And I learned that I don't think I picked up on all the concepts because I was just going so quickly through all the exams. So I definitely want to structure my review time a lot better than, than certainly what I was doing prior. Cause I, I'm not really sure that I, it totally clicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think getting a comprehensive understanding of the concepts and reviewing in depth rather than just burning through exams 
is definitely the way to go. I'm curious, I want to ask you, Bev, uh, when mm-hmm. you first studied before your prior experience, what do you think may have led to your burnout initially? So I was going to say, my. I'm going to just make a caveat note here. My first two tests, I was one of those that like did not, that was back in 2017. So I'm not going to talk about that. That was a long time ago, firstly. And secondly, I was very naive and, and did not study as much. So this, for the last two administrations in the last year, though, um, your question was, what did my like studying look like? Was what that, do you think may have led to burnout? Burnout? What burnout. led to burnout? Um, I think that I hit it so hard every single day. And I was working full time at that point, too. I was a reporter. So I would do that all day. And then in between breaks, I would be studying. At night, I would study. It just never ended. And I would constantly go. I mean, I think I was doing two or three tests a week because I was like, I have to get through all of the new exams. And then I would do review. And I'm, I'm going to say this, like I would rush through the review and I'd be like, OK, I get it. I didn't, though. Um, particularly when it came to logical reasoning. So I think that's what led to the burnout because I just kept pushing it to a limit where it was, it was just wasn't healthy. And then I would retake the same exam again. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. So I think that's really what led to it that round for sure. Okay. Well, that is definitely understandable why burnout could result from a situation like that. But yeah. Given you were working full time, you were squeezing in LSAT wherever you could. And it sounds like you were trying to turn up LSAT to the max while you also had a lot of obligations. I mean, being a reporter is not easy as it is, right? Yeah. And you're doing it full time plus LSAT, squeezing wherever you could and looking to really maximize everything in your LSAT. Luckily, now your life circumstances are much different. Freelancing in its nature can, can allow more free time. Right. And you also have the benefit of having learned from the mistakes of the previous. So- Already, I feel a lot better about what your situation is going to be like going forward in terms of avoiding burnout. And on top of that, you have plenty of time, which is conducive to burnout if you let it. Yeah. But we're having this conversation. You have the study plans built into the course that can make it a lot more manageable, bite-sized. And hey, if you reach the what you need to do for that day in the study plan, you have license. I'm giving you permission to take days off. <laughs> take, take the day off after that. You can attend the classes if it makes sense for you, but you also don't need to. They're all recorded. You can catch them later on your own time. I've enjoyed the classes, but by the way, they've been great. I did, I've done two thus far and I'm, I might do tonight. I need to RSVP because it's the logic reasoning. I haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, thank you. That's really good advice. And I really, I, I mean, my days are kind of, they're not all set in stone too. And things may be changing with like a new job opportunity. So I want to be sure that I have something set that can be changeable so that I'm not like thrown up, you know, in the middle of my study plan. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Um, yeah. So definitely. Well, let's, let's say this. That. So let's say given that right now you're freelancing yeah. a bit more free time, let's say that these days you can do the four or five hours or so a day. Yeah. If the new job comes along, obviously your day is going to be completely revamped in terms of what your schedule looks like. Right. You then turn down the dial a bit on LSAT, where maybe it's okay, you attend some classes and that's all you do. Or you attend classes some days, or what I mean is you attend the classes some days and other days when you have a day off from work, you could then do a bit more LSAT, but aim to get a lot under your belt now, plus having the knowledge of everything you've done up to this point that say, hey, I don't need to turn it up to 11 anymore. I've already learned a lot. I have a good foundation. Yeah, I might wanna shore up some concepts. I might wanna review a bit more in depth than I did previously. But you don't need to learn everything from the beginning. And you also have a few months on top of everything you've done so far. Do you think that it, like if I'm looking at the October exam, that it would be manageable at this point? Because that was the problem. That was the issue on burnout that I made a year ago is that I crammed so much into those two months. And then I was like, no, I have to take November because I'm, it's, I'm not ready. So I just want to be sure of that in terms of as I map out my plan? Well, it depends on what you feel you need to do. I believe that given everything you've done so far, you can get a great score by October, especially since you have a lot of free time. Yeah. But the question is, what exactly 
do you want to achieve based on and where you exactly are you at now? I won't even be able to give necessarily a, a prediction or an answer on that. Yeah. Though. People will say, can I improve 10 points in three months or improve 15 points in two months or whatever it is? Like maybe you certainly yeah. can, you have the potential, but also you see where you're at as it gets closer. Yeah. And I'm trying to think right now in terms of like, I know where I need to fix things, if that makes sense. And I know with the logic games, like I, I am determined to do it every day, except, I mean, I'll, I'll like take a break, but like every day I'd like to do a game just because I'm at the point where I took all that time off. And now my accuracy is there if I'm not timed, but the speed isn't there. Um, and so that's, I even did some games today and I was like, oh, you got this right when you took the time but you're just not there yet. So that I feel a lot better about, but some of the reasoning, yeah, that's, that's really where I need to, to pick up. Pick okay. Up so points. we look at for the next two, three months and change, we look at targeting your weak areas specifically. If that's speeding up on logic games, we look at that. And I'll just briefly share with you a couple of pointers and there's of yeah. course much more in the course. Logic games, you want to maximize your upfront inferences, multiple main diagrams when applicable. The other thing would be maximizing reuse of previous work. So hypothetical scenarios that you've drawn, you look to say, okay, well, can I do all my local questions first, build up that library of hypotheticals, keep them neatly organized, and then refer back to them for more general global questions. Because the alternative of just getting accuracy untimed often tends more into what I call brute forcing, where you're methodically drawing out the scenarios for all five choices, which is something that a computer could do quickly, but people typically can't, right? So we have to be a bit more strategic and go for what seems most likely and how can we maximize everything we've already done to serve us for this new question. And one question I had to, um, I know it's we're counting down here on the time, but uh, I wanted to know in terms of how many, or not how many tests, but um, at what point should I start taking tests again? So I took a diagnostic, which I know that that's, you know, doesn't, it's not really a real predictor, but I want to know how many I should plan for. And if I should like study a month, go through the course and then start taking tests or should I start now? You already have plenty of familiarity with the exam okay. given your previous prep. Yeah. So I don't think you need to wait that long to start okay. doing timed exams relative to someone who's starting fresh. Okay. But that being said, you're getting back into it. Give yourself a little bit of time to re-familiarize yourself, reacquaint yourself with the different sections, different question types that you're not feeling rusty at all. And you give yourself some time to also acquaint yourself with my unique techniques that are shown in the course, including properly reviewing. Once you've done that, you can give yourself a few weeks to do that. Then you start adding in timed exams and you could build up to it starting with timed sections as well. But we're speaking now kind of late July. I'd say give yourself till maybe mid-August. Mid-August. And then mid-August, you start doing a timed exam a week, reviewing in depth. And then that gives you roughly, let's say, two months or so to get more practice tests under your belt. If you have the time and it's not going to tend towards burnout, you could add in a second exam per week. And that gives you something like 10 to 12 full exams before test day, which is plenty. And that would be before October test day. Yeah. Yeah. Before October test day. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I'll definitely plan for that and kind of map out, you know, I really want to get the concepts before I jump back in. I'm just worried. I don't want to burn out on any more tests um, for sure. So thank you for that advice. Yeah, of course. Have anything else I could help you with? Any other questions you have? Oh, I think just my last quick one is just about the study plan, just understanding. So I know they're numbered, but you can do more in one day, right? It's not like one a day. I guess I just want to understand how I should go through that. So the study plan is structured for people who have other obligations. It's not meant to be for full-time study. Okay. So it's oriented around the idea of doing roughly 10 to 15 hours a week. Okay. But you have more time yeah. because you're freelancing. So, so, so I would say do more. Do whatever you're able to do in a particular day. It's more important for the level of specificity than for the exact day-by-day breakdown. So if you want to do two days of work in one, feel free. If you want to do three days of work in one, you could also feel free to do that. And then 
let's say you get the full-time job, you have to slow down a bit. That's fine. You've already gotten ahead of schedule. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I'll definitely do that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Well, it was great to connect with you. Feel free to reach yeah. out with any questions. You need anything. I'm here for you. I'm happy to help. I will for sure. Thank you so much, Steve. It was so nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, you too, Bev. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.